Today we're talking about a movie that didn't do so well at the box office. That's it. We're just counting down the reasons as to why this movie kind of underperformed and why I think that's interesting. No need to leave any angry comments or ranting about SJWs this and that, right? 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 Before we get into things, be sure to subscribe to Comic Island for more top 10 videos concerning all things comic books. I also want to point out before we kick things off that I do like this movie overall, even if I have issues with it. That's why we're here, actually. I think it's interesting that a comic book movie with such promise didn't do so well, because if we examine why that is, we get to look at factors that influence a movie's success beyond its quality. I do also want to point out that while bombed or flopped is a loaded term, there's a lot of evidence showing at the bare minimum, Birds of Prey didn't do as well as it should have. The numbers behind budgets and box office returns should be considered carefully and can't be simply summarized with Wikipedia numbers that are estimates to begin with and generally don't include the marketing budget. But however you look at it, however you cut these numbers, Birds of Prey at best just barely made a profit for Warner Brothers post home release. So it's not some record breaking failure but it did lead to some theaters retitling how this movie showed up on some of their ticket sales formats, which is unusual and I've never heard of a movie doing something like that before. And when we compare this to other comic book movies which were way worse than Birds of Prey, Birds of Prey really underperformed and I want to examine why. Number 10. Worldwide Events and Timing Warner Brothers was a bit unlucky in that world events we do not have to talk about right now or dwell over any more than everyone already is, seriously depressing audience attendance in Asian markets. There's not much one can do about that, it's a factor of life, sometimes things like this happen. But I think there's issues beyond that in terms of when this movie was released. And I think this movie would have worked better as a summer movie. A lot of people I know were more interested in movies attached to the Academy Awards around this time of the year. And thus, when I think about my day-to-day -day conversations at the time Birds of Prey was out, I heard more about the Joker movie, released months before, than I did anything about the Harley Quinn movie still in theaters. Number 9. Sonic the Hedgehog Meanwhile, Sonic came out after Birds of Prey and knocked the latter to second place almost immediately. There's a lot of reasons for this, but the biggest is the whole first trailer debacle and nightmare design of the original Sonic leading to the movie accidentally getting a ton of free press and leaving very little breathing room for the Birds of Prey movie in comparison. By all accounts, Sonic is a lot of fun, even if I haven't bothered to see it myself. So it makes sense that it just sort of won the day at the box office given this, and it meant bad news for an already lackluster Birds of Prey premiere. Birds of Prey was always going to have to compete against something, and in this case, for reasons we'll be delving into in the rest of this video, it came up short. It also undermines the first point to a degree, since Sonic did so much better the same month at roughly the same time. We can't blame Bird of Prey's box office performance on world events that much, given how well Sonic did, and it was released a week after Birds of Prey. Number 8. Margot Robbie and Harley Quinn This next point breaks my heart a little bit, because it's so rough learning about just how much Margot Robbie was involved in making Birds of Prey a thing. She's clearly a big fan of Harley Quinn and wants to make all these different movies for the character, including solo films and even the Gotham City Sirens, the latter being what everyone really wanted with this movie anyways. But with her signed on and very much on board to do all these things already, Robbie wanted to start with Birds of Prey first to help introduce some of these cool characters and get people excited about them before we focus on the solo film or the more famous characters in The Sirens. That's admirable as hell and given that these characters are Black Canary, Cassandra Cain, Renee Montoya, and The Huntress, I am hardly complaining. These are all great characters that absolutely deserve more attention. However, while I very much enjoyed aspects of Birds of Prey, I found I really just don't care all that much about Margot Robbie's particular take on Harley Quinn. What a way to start my new life. <sighs> Maybe it has something to do with her design or her costumes. We'll get a bit more into that later, actually. Or even Robbie's specific performance quirks and accent. But outside of a handful of scenes in Suicide Squad, this character just doesn't really work for me and feels like the weakest link in Birds of Prey. 
it's very hard to dislike a true fan of Harley Quinn putting her all into the role. And it blows my mind how many of these stunts are actually done by Margot Robbie. She gives so much of a damn about her performance as a comic book character, it's very refreshing compared to how a lot of other actors treat this whole thing. Sadly, I'm not sure Robbie has quite captured what I like about this character. When we compare it to the recently premiered and amazing animated Harley Quinn series, I find Robbie's Quinn to be very lacking when compared to Kelly Cuoco and her take on the same character. Everything about this show is what Harley Quinn in the DCEU should be. Irreverent, deeply R-rated, funny as hell, and genuinely insightful about a character recovering from abuse. And the lack of this sort of energy in Margot Robbie's performance really holds me back from fully embracing Birds of Prey, which frankly isn't nearly as funny or fun as this animated series. Number 7. Superpowers and Originality While I'm sure some critics are going to be very snobby about this, you'll have to forgive me for wanting a little more superpowers out of my superheroes. Do not get me wrong, giving superpowers to the many characters in this movie that never really had any powers in the comics would have been ridiculous. But for crying out loud, Black Canary is right there. This movie does this thing that I'm getting very tired of where a character's cool superpower might be hinted at here and there in the movie, but only gets revealed at the end climax, and only once. And while I get why this was done for Black Canary, it means she gets to use her powers properly exactly once in her first movie, and they show it off in the trailer. I just knew that was going to be the case too, the second I saw it show up in said trailer. We'll get into the mess of the marketing later, but it's so frustrating and also not at all in any way a plot twist. Black Canary's powers are one of the first things anyone who learns anything about the character is going to know. I very much understand and even appreciate the need to scale things back a little bit for the more street-level superheroes like the Huntress and Harley Quinn and that sort of thing. I actually wouldn't want there to be more fanfare and some giant space laser at the climax of this movie. That would have all been a disaster. But I really think there was a better balance that could have been achieved in this regard. Or if they didn't want to rely on superpowers at all, they probably shouldn't have included Black Canary. For all the praise the critics give this movie, it's surprisingly generic in how it handles the superhero story stuff like this. The story arc of Harley getting over the Joker. The story of Cassandra becoming this big target the whole city is sort of after. The story of how Renee is a cop who cares too damn much unlike everyone else on the force. The story of Black Canary getting out from under the thumb of Black Mask, making her own way in the world, and discovering her true powers. These are all stories we've seen before without any major change or twist to them. The only thing that's actually distinct in this movie is the Huntress. At least her story is kind of unique even though it has been done before, but they actually subvert it pretty well. Because she's supposed to be this sort of standard revenge girl, like Kill Bill or something like that. But it's subtly made clear throughout the movie she's so new to all of this and in over her head the whole time that I found this aspect of her character to be very delightful. But it's a very small aspect of the movie, and it's not enough when we consider how every other character is kind of a walking, talking cliche, without much to offer in terms of superpowers or originality. Number 6. Lack of Nostalgia I think on some fundamental level, people look at this poster and probably recognize exactly one character. They might guess who the rest of these people are depending on their familiarity with the comics. But I bet even a lot of die-hard comic book fans would have trouble instantly recognizing everyone here. I would say it's largely a failure of costuming more than casting. It's also a failure of DC to have absolutely excluded Batgirl from this movie. They did it because they wanted to make a solo Batgirl movie later that introduces this character, but there is so much wrong with this all at once I don't even know where to begin. First, if that is the case, then there's no point in making a Birds of Prey movie at all. Batgirl or bust as far as I'm concerned when it comes to the Birds of Prey. Additionally, I still don't understand why this movie couldn't introduce Batgirl even if she's going to get a solo movie later, which would make the later Batgirl movie more interesting to begin with, Black Panther style. But no, we get no Batgirl, no reference to Batgirl, no real comic book costumes besides the closest vaguest allusions to them, and villains that only barely resemble their comic book counterparts at key select moments in the movie. And of course, both of these villains are killed off. 
Thanks for wasting two of my favorites, DCEU. It should be noted nostalgia isn't necessary for a comic book movie to be successful, and it absolutely can be overused to the extent it can wreck a movie. But Birds of Prey so thoroughly stripped itself of any comic book content, it effectively took away any true possibility of getting the real push DC fans could have given it. And given what happened at the box office, it really feels like it could have used that push. Number 5. Aesthetics. So I hate, hate, hate the look and feel of this movie. The company Hot Topic is frequently referred to to describe the look of characters in both this movie and Suicide Squad, and I feel that phrase is very appropriate. This is all very subjective, sure, and my dislike of the design is clearly on me, but I don't think I'm the only one who feels this way. And regardless of whether or not these outfits are fashionable, the design of these costumes do not work for these characters in my opinion. Harley's is the perfect example of an over-designed costume, a dog collar labeled Bruce, frills made out of police tape, large amounts of piercings, accessories, and tattoos. So much thought is put into how a character dresses, without consideration of the fact that the character is pretty thoughtless in this regard. I'm not saying Harley Quinn is dumb, but I am saying she is sloppy. This movie even recognizes that fact. Her brain is a mess and her life is a mess. That is reflected in the writing of her character in Birds of Prey, and even in little things like the design of her apartment. But the design of her outfit feels out of place, because it's so meticulously designed and crafted, which doesn't work for the character as presented in the comics. Not really. I like Black Canary's outfit, but maybe not for the right reasons. And in comparison, Renee Montoya and Cassandra Kane just look great, simply because unlike everyone else, they're dressed in normal people clothes appropriate to each of their characters. I mean, I would rather Cassandra Kane look like this, but I'll take what I can get at this point. I just don't understand the costuming and why there was such a need to make it look so much like the Suicide Squad movie, and I'm having trouble imagining that I'm the only person that feels that way, and I'm having an even harder time imagining that didn't have a negative effect on the movie's box office returns. Number 4. Suicide Squad Speaking of which, speaking of making your movie look like Suicide Squad, that was a huge mistake for Birds of Prey. Not only was it a rough note to follow up Harley Quinn's character on to begin with, but it forced the Birds of Prey movie to dance around the Joker in a movie all about Harley Quinn's feelings for the man. He couldn't appear in the movie. <laughs> it also, for whatever reason, had a huge effect on pretty much every element of design in Birds of Prey. I don't know why anyone would want to draw on Suicide Squad as a sort of blueprint for any sort of comic book movie, but DC chose to make the director of Suicide Squad the executive producer of Birds of Prey and it kind of shows on some fundamental level. Between the return of Harley Quinn and these movies looking so similar, both relying heavily on that sort of hot topic over designed attitude I've already talked about relentlessly, I think people took one look at Birds of Prey, remembered Suicide Squad, and decided not to go rushing into theaters, regardless of how good Birds of Prey reportedly was. Number 3. Word of Mouth So I've been dancing around this a little bit, but clearly I have criticisms of this movie that go beyond elements of its release. Just because I liked it, doesn't mean I loved it, and I think this movie has a lot of problems. I didn't exactly finish this thing and feel super excited to tell my friends to go out and see this movie. We've talked about some of the reasons as to why that is. It's humor, Robbie's performance as Quinn, elements of the movie's design, but I found the whole cast kind of lacking. Black Mask and Victor Zaz had a lot of potential, and so did their actors, but I don't really feel their characters really got to do anything meaningful or all that fun. Meanwhile, Black Canary really doesn't get to do all that much either, and I already talked about all my issues with how they treated her superpowers. I like what they did with the Huntress, but I have a lot of issues with her too. The way they set her up to be this rage monster, I feel like every joke around her was super dated. A character points out she has anger issues, and in response she goes, I DON'T HAVE ANGER PROBLEMS! That joke feels very old. Like, I'm pretty sure I heard some variation of it from the early days of The Simpsons 30 years ago. This movie had an awful lot of jokes in it, and I was disappointed at how little I laughed. So that pretty much just left me with Renee Montoya and Cassandra Kane, both of whom were pretty great but only get so much time in an ensemble cast movie 
and definitely couldn't carry things on their own because of it. This movie makes a lot of choices I just don't understand, and at a certain point, things compound. Too many of these weird decisions, in my eyes, didn't come together into a strong enough emotional experience to really drive an audience in that key way you need for word of mouth to work in a movie's favor. When Deadpool came out, it blew people's minds. Everyone was talking about it, so everyone went out to see it. I asked around. Most of my friends had no concept of when Birds of Prey came out, or what to make of it. That's a failure on several levels, which ties into just about all 10 points on this video. In interviews following the film's lackluster release, the director of Birds of Prey claimed that her movie was too risky for current audiences. I think that's a pretty wild opinion, unfortunately. If anything, I would say Birds of Prey wasn't taking nearly enough risks. They did so many things other comic book movies do, and not enough of the more risky things it should have been doing to begin with. How can this movie possibly be considered risky when everything is so watered down compared to the comics and even the current ongoing TV series? For example, in general, Harley always has two hyenas, but in this movie she has one for some reason, and it barely does anything. Now I say for some reason, but the reason is because CGI is relatively expensive, and Bruce the hyena was the only really expensive source of CGI across the entire Birds of Prey film. Deadpool was at least considered a very risky movie when it was first released, and as such it really got people talking. But Birds of Prey, quite simply, is nothing like that. It reflects how I feel about the movie on the whole. I like it, but I don't really consider it some sort of crowning achievement in comic book storytelling. I don't have a lot of very eager reasons to recommend this film. And mediocrity, while not bad, is hardly exciting. Number 2. The R Rating Most of this movie feels PG, with relatively tame action and violence that only sometimes gets gory in key scenes and shots that could have been easily altered or cut entirely. It is thus by far the most bloodless R-rated film I have ever seen. And while there are a good number of swears, they are rare and again, would only need the slightest bit of modifications within the movies and scenes to be removed from the film entirely. It is not a good sign that I watched this entire movie and then had to go online to check what its rating actually was because it had so much trouble telling. It's not at all self-evident from the posters or ads I saw, leading to confusion, I'm sure, at theaters giving people the wrong idea about this movie, affecting their decision of even wanting to seek it out to begin with. And if you fail to adequately communicate the most basic nature of your movie to your prospective audience, well that's a colossal failure beyond even what something that word of mouth can account for. And only one thing truly is responsible for that, which brings me nicely to... Number 1. Marketing Though Birds of Prey is hardly the worst example of movie marketing in film history, it's certainly the biggest problem behind the film. We got a trailer that doesn't do a great job at representing the movie in question for several different reasons. They didn't do a good job at conveying what comic book characters are in this movie. They didn't tell us much about what the story was about, but they do show stuff that spoils key moments in the movie. I'm also not sure it was marketed nearly enough given, like I said earlier, how few of my peers even knew when it came out, or the fact that it had come out to begin with. While the dregs of the world will try and make the failures of Birds of Prey into something it's not, implying that the failure has to do with it featuring ladies, even though there's plenty of superhero movies at this point that are starring women and did just fine at the box office. The failure of Birds of Prey comes down to a failure in marketing and the final product not being strong enough to drive audiences on its own. There are multiple paths to success this movie could have taken. Well executed marketing, or even comic book nostalgia. Systematically, one by one, Birds of Prey eliminated any possibility of those routes of success being open. It's a real death by a thousand cuts situation, where anything that could have helped the movie was held back just enough to not bring in the audience it should have. And there you have it, that's a story of how a great idea got turned into a decent movie which got turned into a big old flop. Fun times. To be fair, recent talk has suggested the movie might still get a sequel, so clearly it wasn't that bad financially, and I do think it's a good decision. Everything we talked about on this top 10 could easily be addressed and improved on, and more importantly, maybe we can finally get Batgirl. Who knows? But whatever the case might be, I guess we'll cover that disaster when it happens <laughs> here on Comic Island. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time 
here on YouTube. Huh. I did not think of this sign-off message when I started it. Bye!